Listen, I've got something really special for y'all today. And this recipe, y'all, is old as Methuselah. Some of y'all know who Methuselah is, and some of you don't. <laughs> but this recipe is that old. And the name of this recipe is Ginger Cream Squares. And we're going to make this today. And this is a recipe from an older relative that's passed on. Her name was Ruby Gant. And y'all, she had, um, it was either three or four sisters that I, I, I used to know, but I forgot how many sisters she had. But every one, every single one of the sisters lived to be in their late 90s. And I think there were two of them that lived to be um, like 102, 103. So they had good genes, but also something they ate a lot of was this. And I'm going to show it to you. It's molasses. Molasses. And so, um, I, so I, you know, back in the olden days, people used to eat a lot of molasses because uh, it was like a, so, a sugar substitute. And... Um, I, I kind of I thought about it, and I thought, you know, maybe that's why they live so long. So I looked it up. I went on the internet today, and I looked up molasses. And to find out a little bit about molasses, molasses cane syrup. So here's what it said. It says that molasses is a byproduct of um, sugar. And the sugar that it's a byproduct of is, y'all know that long sugar cane it's a cane and you strip it my daddy used to strip it and cut it in fourths and give it to us and give us a little fourth of it we'd chew it and get all the goody out of it and then spit out the that straw part but they take that um that sugar cane and they cook that down that cook that juice down that they've gotten out of there and when they t cook it down, you can get ribbon cane syrup. Uh, you can cook it on further and get molasses. But I want to show y'all how thick this is. Now, we're going to make something with some white lily flour, some all-purpose white lily flour. We're going to use this cane syrup. Now, if you can't get it in your area, I'm sorry. <laughs> but maybe you can find in, the grocery, in your grocery store some. And if you can't, Maybe you could find just a real thick dark syrup. So I want I want to show you how thick this is. See how it's taking a long time to even come out of the jar. See how thick. Um, my husband told me that one time they had a, some little boys that came over to their house after church one Sunday and his mama had cooked a bunch of peas and all that other kind of stuff and had it on the table. And those little boys... Asked if she had any syrup. And she said, well, yes. And she got it out. And they put syrup all over their peas and everything else. And so, uh, anyway, let me get me a napkin right here. My nose is wanting to run. That, the fall air is getting me kind of drippy, I guess. I don't know. Stopped up. So, anyway, when I looked up this byproduct, I want to tell you something. Molasses or the syrup. It's healthy. It's got uh, 3% calcium in it. It's got 8% vitamin B6, 5% iron, and 12% magnesium. So, but it is made from the sugar out of the sugar cane. But, uh, hey, we need the calcium and the magnesium for our bones and stuff. And so this is really thick, and I think that's going to do good. And so what I'm doing today, y'all come on over here. We're going to make this thing up. I'm telling you. Let me put you over here, I think, first. We're going to mix our, uh, we're going to mix our wet ingredients in this mixer right here. Let me pull it over here where you can see. We're going to make us some, something. And it's going to be just a little pan, and it's going to be easy. And so let me get my recipe that this Ruby had. Maybe we'll live to be 90-something years old if we eat this. I don't know. Heck. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with a half a cup of shortening, and I've already got it measured out for you because it's about time for my coffee. So I'm going to cook this, and I'm going to have it with my coffee today. 
There's a half a cup of shortening. I already measured it out. The other table we did shortening when Banks and I were doing it. Remember I didn't have any? Well, I went and bought me some. I got me all I could. And we're going to cream this with a half a cup of sugar, which I've already whoop, measured out. I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it creaming, y'all. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to put in a half a cup of molasses. Just get it back over here where we can see it. I'll just use this half a cup to do it. Probably take forever to slow. You ever heard that? Uh, have you ever heard that old saying, she's as slow as molasses? Well, now you know how they got it, don't you? I told you it'd take a long time. Are y'all as slow as molasses? It's not there yet. Just be patient. Be patient. It's coming. the side and then I'm going to turn it on again and we're going to do our dry ingredients. Look at that. That's dripping off right there. We're going to do our dry ingredients and then we're going to pop it in the oven in a greased and floured shallow pan. Then I'm going to heat my coffee up and you can eat some with me. All right, that's good. Let me wash my hands off. Got some of that Amish farm soap to wash my hands. I need to wash them off, too. Get all that sticky off of it. One thing about molasses, it's sticky. I'm telling you. All right. Now, come on over here. Let's get all our dry ingredients. Oh, y'all are getting heavy. Y'all are hard to pick up. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, we're going to get over here. Now, what you want to do today is you're going to use your, when you get your flour today, you're going to use the all-purpose, and that's plain. And some of you are still not sure what to use with what. Follow your recipe when you're baking. If it says all-purpose, this is what you want to use, all-purpose. Sometimes you'll hear me call it plain, and I don't know where in the world I got that idea, but I guess Mama said it. I don't know. Maybe my grandmother said it. Who knows? All right, I'm going to get two cups of plain flour. I, you do not have to sift it. It didn't say sift it. It just said get two cups. Little bit more. 
All right, that's it. Two cups of all-purpose white lily flour. And to that, we're gonna get out our little measuring spoons right here. And we're going to put a teaspoon of soda. A teaspoon of cinnamon. It's already sounding good, isn't it? There we go. Miss Ruby would be so proud to know that we were making her cake today. Bless her sweet soul. And a teaspoon, I mean, excuse me, a teaspoon of salt. You get the salt out. And a half a teaspoon of your ginger. I guess that's why it's called ginger ginger cream. Okay. Now we're going to go back over here to our mixer. Y'all come on back over here. Oh, goodness. There we go. One of these days I'll have my kitchen all organized. Y'all won't know what to think, will you? Let me get my spoon. And... We, so we've got our dry ingredients we're going to mix in here. And the only other thing we're going to mix in is this wrong piece of paper. That was the one I looked up on the internet. The only other thing we're going to put in here is two-thirds cup of uh, buttermilk. I got that measured out. Two-thirds cup of buttermilk. So we, and we're supposed to alternate it. So let me stir this up just a little bit. I like to kind of do that so it'll be mixed up a little bit. Okay. So we'll put a little, we're going to alternate it. So we'll put a little bit of this, our dry ingredients. And a little bit of milk. like to try new recipes sometimes and I'll be truthful with you when we get through if it's good or not I'll be truthful I don't want you to make anything for your family that's not good I try to find good good recipes and I've got some of old my grannies and stuff like that and some of these older recipes you just can't beat them you, you absolutely can't beat them they made with what they had Alright, we put the rest of this in. Okay. And the rest of our milk. Scrape the sides down. We're going to cook it, and when it comes out of the oven, I'm going to make a glaze to go on top out of um, powdered sugar and milk. So, it's going to be good, y'all. It's going to be good. That's it. Look how pretty that batter is. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. It smells real good, too. It smells like fall. That's why I decided to do it now. You know, the holidays are approaching. And this is a great dish right here. 
Go buy you some white lily and get you some molasses syrup. And you probably got all that other stuff in your counter. You don't have to buy but two things. The only thing I was kind of shocked at in here that it didn't have in it is there was no there was no oil or butter. But it didn't go for it. There's there's not any in it. Okay. I'll just bring the pan over here so y'all can see me what kind of pan I'm going to use. Instead of carrying y'all around, I'll just get the pan. Okay. Here's the pan I'm using. Looks like an 8 by 8 or a 9 by 9 It says a, it just said on the recipe, a shallow pan at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. So, I imagine it's a quarter on what size pan you've got. If it's a real big one, it probably won't take so long, but mine a little thicker. Y'all see? Yeah, you can see. It sure looks good. It looks creamy. Maybe that's why she called it ginger cream. I wonder where she got it. I just know this, y'all. You can substitute sometimes syrup in the place of raw sugar. And that's probably what they did back then because they, um, gosh, I don't want to waste any of it. I want to get it all out of here. Let me put this in the sink. I'll gently put this around. Because they used what they had. And I had told y'all about my granny one time during the Depression. Went down the street to, or the road, this little old dirt road. She went down there to a neighbor and said, Would you please, please give me just a little bit of flour, a cup of flour. Because she called him Bubba Butt. Her husband wanted a biscuit so bad they didn't have any flour. And that and somebody and I never did finish that story when I was telling it to y'all. And yes, the lady gave her the flour. And yes, my big daddy had biscuits. He ate them. You you don't miss your water till the whale runs dry. He didn't miss that good floured biscuit until he didn't have one. So y'all need to learn to cook with what you have. You need to learn to substitute and you need to learn to experiment. Now, you saw in the cookbook where I told about um, that God gave you five senses and you need to use them. Well, that's the truth. If you got good ingredients in whatever you're doing, you might could make up a recipe and see what you come out with. But I'm going to put this in the oven on 350 degrees for 20 or 30 minutes. I don't know which. I'm going to have to stick the thing in it and see. And then we're going to come back. We're going to have it. I'm going to put the glaze on it. And you and I are going to have a piece of cake. We're going to have some ginger cream cake. Ginger cream squares. Excuse me. Squares. We're going to cut it in squares is what it's called. See in just a little bit. All right, y'all. The cake uh, squares, the ginger cream squares have been on for 30 minutes exactly. And I am gonna take it out and I'm gonna test it just to see if it's done. So let me pick this up, put it right here and y'all come right here. Okay, come on. Come on over here with me. All right, Let's, let me just look and we'll We'll see if it's if it's done. I'm gonna stick the stick in it and see what happens. It looks good. It's a little bit, I don't wanna cook it too long. 30 minutes is plenty. All right, so here's what we're gonna do now. It's said to put a, um, a glaze on top of it. So, you know, y'all are always asking me what's in these jars over here. So I'm gonna tell you today so you'll know, okay? <laughs> 
Let me get my scissors out. I'll show you how I do it, okay? I'll turn my oven off. All right, so here's what I got over here, all right? And these are Lance jars, and some of y'all have asked about that too. Lance is a type of cracker, and this is old-timey Lance jar. So the first one is sugar, white sugar. The second one is white lily self-rising cornmeal. The next one is white lily plain or all-purpose flour. The next one is white lily self-rising flour. Now come on down this way a little bit. Uh, this one right here is powdered sugar. This one right here is crackers, like soda crackers. And the last one over here is um, um, rice. I keep my rice in a jar. Then you come on around here, and this is brown sugar. And this is popcorn. And my my uh, coffee is over there. And here's what I do. So I, I just know the what's what because I've been doing it for so long. But, but I don't want to ever get my flowers mixed up. So this one is the plain flower. So here's what I do. I pour my, this is white lily plain or all purpose. I just pour it in there like this. And it makes it so handy. I want to say this out today so y'all can kind of see how I do it. Okay, then I take my scissors and I just cut out, I cut out this little thing right here that says all purpose and I just stick it in there like that because you don't want to mess up. I'm going to tell you, you if it calls for self-rising, use self-rising. If it calls for all purpose, use that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get me one scoop of powdered sugar. I turned it off too soon, didn't I? All right, there's one scoop. And I am just gonna pour a little bit of milk in it. Now you can over pour it. I mean, you can put too much milk in a heartbeat. So what I do is this. I'm gonna just barely pour some. Maybe that's a lot of teaspoon right there. Okay, I'll pour another little teaspoon. Look at there, it's already... See there, you just can't put much. If you put much, you're going to have to put more sugar because that's all I can use. Isn't that something? I bet I didn't use two teaspoons of that. All right, get it back over here. All right. It said to put your glaze on top. You could put anything you wanted, but this is what this Ruby put. Okay, there's your glaze. And just uh, leave your spoon straight up like that. Let it pour off the bottom of it. Don't tump your spoon over. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. Put some on the edge so it'll kind of go down in that side. Looks pretty, doesn't it? This would be an easy thing for y'all to fix if you had company coming in. Um, in October, holiday season, you need some little simple things like this to, to make. And they're so good with just a cup of coffee. And y'all can sit in there and have you some coffee and little ginger squares. Right, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna heat my, get my coffee and then I'll be right back. All right, got me a cup of good hot coffee. Black. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut us a, pe a square. And I hope it'll be good. Mm, looks good. Let me get me a hot pad and I'll show you the kind of the inside what what it's kind of looking like like that kind of looks like a like a little bread thing like a ginger bread i'm gonna break all that off the side 
Okay, here it is. Looks good, doesn't it? It's kind of got a crumbly texture. See how soft it is? That's a plenty ginger in it. It tastes good. It's a real it's real soft. It's real soft and crumbly. You can see how crumbly it is. And it reminds me of that um, apple cake that we made that time. I believe it'd be good with apples in it too. But I can tell how that, that would be so good uh, in, a, in cold weather like it is right now in October. Y'all been asking about these mugs I drink out of. They're from that Jerry Brown pottery up there in North Alabama. That's where I got that. Anyway, this is good cake, good products. Good squares. I think it would be good with cream cheese icing on it too. And I can see that it does not need butter and it does not need oil. So think about it. Good for you. Got syrup. And white lily. Oh, and I want to show y'all something. Y'all see my new thing I've got up here on my wall? Right there? Let me tell you about it. Years ago, George and I um, went to North Alabama. And that's when we owned the antique shop. And we went to a place. And this woman was selling stuff. And we loved that picture of the church. Come on over here where you can see it. Maybe y'all can help me identify it. And we bought this painting. It is an oil painting. And it's by Kay. That's the girl's name. K-A-Y. -A and then M-A-C-Q-U-E-E-N. McQueen. K McQueen painted that. And George and I fell in love with it, and we bought it. We came home, and we put it right there. And and it stayed there for years, and then I moved it in there over the fireplace, and I left it there for years, and I decided I wanted it back. So now I have my church back in my kitchen, and I like it. I hope you do, too.